So thank you, Tim, for that introduction. Um, and uh, I'll mention something else. I, I used, I'm a retired art teacher. So I, I've been a teacher and that may come through a little bit right away here, but uh, I'd like to get started just by giving you a bit of an introduction. Oh, and, and Tim mentioned how to purchase the book. I just put in a link on the uh, chat so you can go to where you can purchase the book if you want. If you'd if you like to support local bookstores, Boswell Books has them for you. But um, we're here to look at the Greenway and I'm gonna show you just a few real quick pictures of the Greenway from the strategic points where you can see them the best, uh, see, see what we're looking at the best. And that is the bridges at Locust Street and at this one is at Capitol Drive looking north, in this case, towards Estabrook Park. And then at Capitol Drive here, looking south uh, from Capitol towards the buildings in the background are UWM. And then from Locust Street, this is Locust Street looking north. The first picture I showed you, the first picture I showed you um, was also from Locust Street uh, looking south towards downtown Milwaukee. Uh, but since I'm a teacher, I like to start with a quiz. And if we were doing this in person, I would actually be asking you to answer the questions, see if you know the questions. We'll let this be rhetorical, see how many of you know the answers to these questions. If you think you do, you can just, you know, for, for the moment to keep that to yourself. But uh, uh, which do you think? There are 12 parks in the Greenway, as you can see from the question, 12 parks, which is the largest? And we're looking at an aerial view of the largest, which is Lincoln Park. Lincoln Park is at the north end of the Greenway. Question number two, what famous architect designed Riverside Park? And if you know the answer. In fact, if you know the name of any landscape architect, it's probably Frederick Law Olmsted, and he designed three parks in Milwaukee, two of which have urban ecology centers at them, Riverside Park, Washington Park, and the third park is Lake Park, uh, and Frederick Law Olmsted is world-renowned ar landscape architect. Question number three, what is the blue hole? Anybody think they know what the blue hole is? If you have hiked along the west side of the river between Capitol Drive and, and Port Washington Road, which is across the river from Estabrook Park, you will have come across this pond which is the Blue Hole. And its distinction is not only that it's a nice little pond, but that it used to be known as Suicide Hole. Its origins was as a quarry. There was a cement making uh, uh, factory and, and business here along the river that quarried limestone to make cement out of. And this was one of two big quarries and has been left as a pond. Kids used to swim in it back in the 1920s and some of them died and that was of course unfortunate. And therefore uh, the county decided to build a beach in Estabrook Park to draw people away from uh, the Blue Hole so they wouldn't swim in there anymore. Uh, and you probably didn't know there was a beach once in Estabrook Park because there is no evidence of it left. Where was the amusement park known as Wonderland? In fact, this amusement park grew over the years. It had several different names. Uh, the most well-known name is Wonderland, but it went through different ownership and different naming. And it was located where Hubbard Park is now in Shorewood. Uh, Hubbard is a very small park. It's a city, a village of Shorewood Park. Uh, it's only four point something acre, acres. 
and it ends at the railroad. And the, the amusement park was mostly on the west side, or the east side of the railroad where Shorewood has a park called River Park there now. All right, multiple choice. We're talking about a greenway. What is a greenway? It could be a green belt around a city, the riparian fridge of vegetation along a river, a roadway flanked by parkland, a long narrow park. So what is a greenway? Well, it could actually be any of these things. In Milwaukee, the Milwaukee River Greenway is all of them except A, uh, but it, it is B, C, and D in some places. What is the name of the trail that ties together the entire greenway? I'm guessing that some of you who think you know the answer are thinking it is the Oak Leaf Trail, which is a good, good answer, but not completely accurate because the Oak Leaf Trail veers away from the Greenway. It, it runs along the edge of most of the Greenway, but veers away from the Greenway at Riverside Park uh, and goes to the east. But there is a trail, here's a hint, it's the river, and there's a name for this trail, the Milwaukee Urban Water Trail. I hope you've heard of it, but if you haven't, it's an official designation by the, the U.S. Um, Department of the Interior, uh, the Rivers and Trails Department. They've identified trails all over the country, and we have an official urban water trail in the Milwaukee River. And of course, the urban water trail goes beyond the confines of the Greenway. It runs up uh, the Milwaukee River and down to the harbor and up the Menominee River and the Kinnikinick River. So the urban water trail is bigger than the Greenway. So where are we? Here's a map from the book, uh, thanks to Milwaukee County Parks Department. Uh, this map is one of two that are in the book. And this one identifies the trail system uh, along the Greenway. Uh, you can see from the map that the big area at the top of the trail, can you, I hope you can all see my arrow. Um, the trail, yep. the, the we can, big We can green, see the arrow. The, yes, <laughs> thank you. The, the big green, park at the top of the uh, map here is Lincoln Park. Estabrook Park runs along this side of the river between Port Washington and Capitol. And we have Kern Park. We're going to see pictures of all of these places. This is where Hubbard Park is, where the uh, amusement park used to be once upon a time. I'm going to talk about, th this is where the place called Pleasant Valley Park is. I'm going to tell you more specifically about that in a little bit. We are, uh, the Urban Eg Ecology Center is at Riverside Park, which is here. Across from Riverside Park is Gordon Park. Way down at the southern end is the existing park. The, the long existing park is called Caesars Park on the east side. A very new park on the west side, northwest side, is Turtle Park. And we're going to see example, you know, pictures from each of these as we go along. Um, I, I want to pause here and see if anybody has any questions. And while you're thinking of a question, if, if you don't, that's okay. But um, I want to mention the 878 acres. I don't know if that sounds large or small to you, but it's larger than Central Park in New York City, which is about 800 acres, and which was also designed by Frederick Law Olmsted. At 878 acres, this is a park that could command attention, especially because it's a much more natural looking park than in, in many places than Central Park in New York City is. But, and, and Central Park is a world famous park for good reasons, it's a wonderful park, uh, but Milwaukee's Greenway is not a world famous park and 
one of the reasons I created a book about it is to help make it more well known. Because people in Milwaukee often are surprised to find, you know, even, even living near it, people are surprised to find what a wonderful treasure they have right in their midst. Any questions? If not, we will move into a little bit of history. So there, there uh, is a section there. The book that I wrote is with a number of other uh, collaborators, including Tim, who's with us, and e Ethan, who is with us. Um, they both have voices in the book. Uh, and a number of other people, Ken Leinbach, the director of the Urban Ecology Center, has a voice in it. But there, is, there are four chapters in the book, and one of them is about the history. And, you know, we, we really need to spend a little bit, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the history unless you have questions, uh, but we really should spend a little bit of time. And it all began with this, this dam. This is a historical picture that was I, I found at the Milwaukee County Historical Society. And you can see what the, the historic dam used to be, right? Uh, the bridge in the background of this picture is North Avenue. It looks different today, but it's still there, uh, a newer version of that bridge. And we can see what this looks like today. I wanna to draw your attention to all of the buildings that are along the sides of the bluffs on both sides. It was well developed at this end of what is now the Greenway. And today, now there are certainly buildings along the edges of the Greenway, but if you're down in the Greenway, it's all trees. So here's what used to be the dam. It is now a pedestrian bridge and it was opened in 1997 uh, after a number of years trying to figure out whether it should be opened or not. It was eventually opened. And uh, the Greenway was, was not immediately established, but the land had been uh, left undeveloped after all of the businesses that used to be here 100 years ago uh, went out of business. And, and that's a little bit more of the history I'll get to in a, in a, in a bit. So I assume. I shouldn't assume, but I expect most of you have been to the Urban Ecology Center and, at Riverside Park. And if you have, you've probably walked out to the Arboretum. <laughs> it, would, it surprises most people to learn that that beautiful space used to look like this. This is what uh, this is the land, this is the factory that is on the land that now looks like this. This is the Arboretum last year. The hill here is brown because I took this picture just after the Urban Ecology Center conducted a burn of the prairie grasses up there. So uh, that's why it's all brown. But, but this is looking out across from Gordon Park to the Arboretum and the Urban Ecology Center is over the hill behind us. Another well-known structure a hundred years ago was this one, I'm sorry, I thought I took, took off the uh, automatic advance here. This is the Gordon Park bathhouse, and you can see it was a rather grand affair. It was well used, uh, both summertime and wintertime, as you can see, the river, which was then a lake because it was backed up behind the North Avenue Dam, it froze solid. In fact, not only was there ice skating all up and down the river, but they harvested ice for the breweries to keep you know, the beer cold and that sort of thing. This is what this view looks like today. Same view. The only thing left of that grand bathhouse is this wall, which is full of graffiti these days, as you can see. All right, so I'm gonna take you now on a tour. That was a very brief history um, and I should pause again. So the, the history involves an awful lot more than that and, and it's covered thoroughly in the book. But uh, if you have, again, that's on automatic, sorry about that. Um, if you have any questions, I'll pause here again for a second. 
I'm not seeing anything in the chat. I will just say there's a very recently, Eddie, a, um, I think it's a Milwaukee Walks. I'll, I'll put the link in um, the, the chat, but there's a, a very recent entry that looks at um, the, the community of people that live upstream from, from the dam um, that was really, really interesting. So I'll, I'll put that link in the chat. Good, okay. So we're starting here at Lincoln Park. Um, I took this panoramic picture from the island, which is in the middle of the park and in the middle of the Milwaukee River, which goes around it. There is an ox, there is a double oxbow in of the river in Lincoln Park. It used to be a again a lake backed up by the Estabrook Dam, but that dam was taken out in 2018. Uh, and now it's the, just the running river, but it's still, the oxbows are really nice for uh, paddling in if you canoe or kayak. And I'll come back to that when we talk about kayaking a little bit. Uh, Lincoln Park also has a golf course among many other amenities. It's the third largest park in the Milwaukee County Park System. Uh, and so it has a water park, it has lots of playing fields, but it also has some nature, un undisturbed nature, so to speak. Moving south from Lincoln, we get to Estabrook Park, well known for its beer garden, but also for the falls, the only uh, natural falls in the Greenway. And here is a picture of the beach I mentioned across from the Blue Hole in Estabrook Park. Uh, this was 100 years ago, and so, well, approximately. The, the beach was established in around 1930, and it lasted about 15 years before, and I haven't mentioned this in the history of the Greenway yet, but one of the reasons it has remained undeveloped and undisturbed for so many years, and one of the reasons it wasn't continued to be developed was the river got terribly polluted uh, starting in the early 20th century and getting worse and worse until no one wanted to swim in the, no one was allowed to swim in fact in the river uh, in the middle of the 1940s. By that point, the river was just too polluted. And not only was it dangerous for swimming in, it was so obnoxious just smelling it that nobody wanted to be even near it. And that's what happened it drove people away from what is now the Greenway, uh, and people just didn't go there for decades. This is the same view today. There is nothing left of that beach. Okay, so we're moving south again from Lincoln Park on the west side of, I mentioned this, the west side of the river at Estabrook Park is a new, a relatively new trail. In fact, there's a brand new accessible trail, crushed gravel accessible trail that was just developed this fall by the River Revitalization Foundation. The land on this side of the river is all privately owned, but the River Revitalization Foundation has obtained easements along the, the, the edge of the river so that they could create this trail. If you do walk along this trail, one of the things you will discover is the series of sculptures that this man, his name is Tom Poif, uh, he created these sculptures out of the remnants of the Estabrook Dam when it was demolished in 2018 the Milwaukee Riverkeeper Organization commissioned him to take pieces of the dam, uh, including this in the background of this picture is a, an actual gate from the dam. The stones that make up this turtle sculpture and some of the other stones here uh, are from the dam. And this structure is known as a shark's tooth. It was placed in the river above the dam in order to protect the, there was a whole series of these, to protect the dam from floating logs and other debris. Uh, the sculptor created this sturgeon to place on top of this shark's tooth that was reclaimed from the, the river. 
this is where the dam used to be. And I should mention that I didn't do any of the aerial photographs that you're seeing. The contemporary aerial photographs were done by a friend of mine named Steve Bell, who lives near, near Lincoln Park. And he's a wizard with a drone. So he, he took the aerial pictures with his drone. This is where the Estaburg Dam used to be, right here. And it connected across here. There was a little serpentine spillway dam here, but the actual gates were on this side. And when this dam was created, there was no river on this side. This was not an island. This channel had to be blasted out of the limestone by the civilian conservation corps in the 1930s in order to create, I think it was the 1930s, uh, in order to create the, uh, the dam at this spot. And it's one of the widest spots in the river now. Okay, moving south from Capitol, we get on the west side of the river, we get to Kern Park. Kern Park was uh, donated, the land for Kern Park was donated by a man named Kern. And he had a business, a flour milling business on the Milwaukee River south of here. And he had a, an estate, this was his property, when he built an estate there and he donated it to the county in about 19... 07 or 09 or something like that. Kern Park has the distinction of this tree, and this may just look like an ordinary large tree to you, but there is a system in Wisconsin of champion trees, and a champion tree is the largest tree of its species in the state of Wisconsin, and this is a London plane tree, and it is the largest in Wisconsin. And this is a jewelweed, which is teensy tiny. <laughs> it's a really minuscule flower, which you can also find along the river in Kern Park. So the large and the small. Moving south along the west side of the river, you get to, to uh, Pleasant Valley Park. What a cool name, huh? But if you're walking along the river in either direction, or if you find the park from Concordia uh, Drive up on the bluff, in any of the three spots where you can access this park, there is no sign. You will not know that you're there unless you happen to know that this is Pleasant Valley Park. Not sure why there's no sign, but one of the things you'll find in Pleasant Valley Park is this mysterious bridge, which isn't actually a bridge. If you walk across it, there is a trail on either side that have been created. And you, know, you can see that it looks like a, there are railings to hold you up and that sort of thing, but uh, it's actually an aqueduct. It was built by the uh, sewage district in order to convey sewage down to its Jones Island treatment plant, <laughs> but it doesn't seem to have any purpose when you walk across it. This is an example of some of the management practices. This hill was being badly eroded, and so it was, uh, it's being reseeded. It was graded and reseeded, and now it looks like this. This is still Pleasant Valley Park. The, the history of Pleasant Valley Park is also pretty dramatic. It was named Pleasant Valley by uh, the owner that built a resort property here back again a hundred years, more than a hundred years ago, hundred almost 150 years ago. It was the first one of the, the great beer gardens that was built along the, the lake that was backed up behind the North Avenue Dam, and it became a resort, uh, one of many resorts, including the Wonderland Amusement Park we mentioned earlier, uh, that you could access most commonly by riverboat. They, the riverboats went up and down, steamboats went up and down the river and delivered people to various resort places all along the river. Um, this was an enormous establishment and you can't find a trace of it left. There's some private land in the Greenway. This is one of the more prominent examples. The Keenan Land 
preserve is only, I think it's less than three acres, but it's owned by the Quakers, the Milwaukee Friends. Uh, they have their meeting house at the top of the bluff and they have a preserve, which they're very proud of and which is private, but you know, you're allowed to walk across it if, if, as they say, you are respectful. South from this spot, you get to one of the few remaining major structures that was built over a hundred years ago. And this is the Milwaukee Waterworks Pumping State, excuse me, Station. The water is delivered to this spot uh, through a big tunnel uh, that delivers water from the lake. Uh, the, you may know the Linwood Treatment Plant is on Lake Michigan, uh, just east, you know, due east of here. And it, it is delivered here and then pumped from here out to the rest of the community. Okay, crossing the river, again, south of Capitol Drive, we get to Hubbard Park. I've mentioned Hubbard Park. I took this picture during the shutdown in 2020, in I think it was April. Uh, we had a nice warm day in early spring and people were out enjoying the park, but keeping their social distance. Hubbard Park is, uh, access through a, an interesting little pedestrian tunnel. There's also a, uh, a vehicle tunnel that goes under what is now the Oak Leaf Trail, but was originally a railroad. And this is the view. So south from Hubbard, you get to one of my favorite parts of the Greenway, and this is Cambridge Woods. It's a narrow park squeezed between the river and the railroad, uh, which is now the Oak Leaf Trail, uh, and they're used, to, it's, it's one of the best places to see wildflowers in the spring, especially. Uh, you're seeing here uh, white trillium and red trillium, which is more rare than white trillium, and of course, jack in the pulpit. This flower in the upper right is a forked aster, which is a threatened species in Wisconsin. And this is a choke cherry, a bush with this lovely little flower. Uh, there used to be a community of houses that, that was built right along the bluff in Cambridge Woods. And if you walk along the bluff trail, the, the river trail, you will find foundations of the, some, a few foundations left of these houses that used to be uh, along the river. But you will also still find this mysterious tunnel, which has been dubbed the Tunnel to Nowhere, because if you go in it, you will see it really doesn't go anywhere. There's a dead end wall at the other side where you expect the opening to be. And there's no record of why this is here, but the speculation is that the Schlitz Brewing Company, which owned the land along the river here, probably harvested ice for their brewing operation and probably use this to get under the railroad to deliver ice. Uh, there used to be a ravine on the other side which got filled in, which is why it goes nowhere anymore. Uh, moving south on the west side of the river from Locust Street, you will get to Gordon Park. And this is a view from the bluff at Gordon across to Riverside Park. And I wanna show you what this looked like again, a hundred years ago. It, it's unrecognizable, <laughs> not only because that factory is across the river, but what we're, we're viewing this from the top of a ski jump, which is obviously no longer there. Uh, there aren't very many trees and there are, as you can see, thousands of people lining the event, watching ski jumpers go across, down the jump and across the river. We don't do this anymore. You know, once, once the river got polluted, people stopped coming here and all of this got torn down and going back, 
the trees grew back up and now it looks like this. That's true of Riverside Park too. So this is looking at uh, an old photograph from a postcard. Uh, we're in Gordon Park looking across the river at Riverside Park. Frederick Law Olmsted designed among other things, a pavilion. And if you've walked in Riverside Park, you've probably seen the staircase, which is still there, but none of the rest of this is, is left. Uh, uh, I don't know when it was torn down, but it was torn down and now all that's left is a staircase. Well, and of course it isn't a lake anymore either. Here's Riverside Park. It's now, this is still called the Olmsted Promenade on a section of the park. And uh, you can't talk about Riverside Park without the Urban Ecology Center, of course, we're all familiar with that. And here is our friend, Ken. South of that is the new section of the Rotary Centennial Arboretum. But in fact, as you may know, Riverside Park is officially part of the Arboretum, which covers an entire 40 acres along the east side of the river from Locust Street to North Avenue. That's all part of the Arboretum. But when you think about the Arboretum, most people think about the area around the arch, which has been re-landscaped from that old factory I showed you. And the flowers there, as you can see, are spectacular. Of course, the Urban Ecology Center has been planting a lot of trees along the river. Uh, we call it an Arboretum. It's it's all for the trees. And you may know Kim Forbeck. Here is, she is in the Arboretum. She is the land steward of Urban Ecology Center. The East Bank Trail, when it was originally developed, ran from Riverside Park down to the dam, the former dam, and it was created uh, by the River Revitalization Foundation and the Urban Ecology Center to connect uh, those sections, but it has since been expanded and you can now walk along the East Bank Trail. It isn't, it isn't crushed gravel the entire way, so it isn't accessible the entire way, but from the former North Avenue Dam all the way to Lincoln Park, uh, which is approximately seven miles without crossing a road. You're going under all of the bridges. You're going along the edge of the Milwaukee River and you can continue to walk off road on the Oak Leaf Trail all the way up to Silver Spring Drive, a total of eight miles, almost eight miles. It's a great trail. And if you've ever walked it, you've probably seen the murals on the uh, structure holding up the, the pillars holding up the North Avenue Bridge. And this is the artist who created them. Her name is Melanie. On the west side, the trail going from Gordon down to the Gordon Park down to the beginning at the dam is called the Beer Line Trail. And the name may be obvious to us today, but uh, Many people aren't aware that the beer line was originally the railroad that served the beer companies, the breweries, downtown Milwaukee, and ran up along the west side of the river and not only delivered beer away from the, the breweries, but also delivered ice that was harvested from the river down to the breweries. It's now a bike trail. Also along the west side, right along the river, the, the Beer Line Trail is mostly up on the top of the bluff. It comes down to the riverside at the southern end. But along the riverside, there is a West Bank Trail, just like there is an East Bank Trail. The West Bank Trail doesn't go all as far as the East Bank Trail, though it ends just before Port Washington Road.
I want to let the view of this building sink in just for a second. There is, when the Milwaukee River Greenway was established, it is, of course, a wonder. It's a, it's a treasure to have protected land in the heart of a city like this. There are very few cities that have, I mean, many cities have parks, but very few cities have this kind of park, which is a relatively natural area right near downtown uh, and left managed as a natural area for, for large portions of it. As I said, it's 878 acres. But what's more remarkable than that is that when this was created, and this took a lot of work, not only was the land protected, but the view was protected. Now, this is an exception because this building was built by UWM as a dormitory before the Greenway was established. But once the Greenway was established, buildings could no longer be built in a way that you could see them from the riverside. It's called protecting the view shed as well as protecting the land. And I love this concept. It's a remarkable concept. UWM built a, a companion dormitory right across the river from this one just after the creation of the Greenway. And now you can't see the building. You can barely see it through the winter trees, but in the summertime, you can't see it at all. So this is a really ideal example of the benefit of protecting not only the land, but protecting the experience of being in nature. So getting down to the south end of the Greenway, we get to the old dam, which is now a pedestrian walkway from Caesars Park on the east side, which you see here, looking across from Caesars to the west side. And on the west side, we have a new park, which is owned by the River Revitalization Foundation that they named Turtle Park. And this is where their headquarters are. You can just see their green roof in the background of this picture. It's, as you can see, it's a spectacular park in when the flowers are blooming, which is most of the summer and into the fall. It is a relatively small park at four acres and it's squashed between the river and these condominiums that you can see here. But it is a really beautiful park. So I'm going to pause again for a moment and see if anybody's come up with any questions. You have been a very disappointing audience so far because I haven't gotten a single question. So I'm gonna give you a chance to make up for that. Anybody have a question? <laughs> hmm. Is there anybody out there? I, 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 I have a oh, question. Um, how did the Turtle Park get its name? And does yeah, it have an anything interesting... to do with, okay. Thank you, yeah, that's an interesting question. Well, not only because that's a, an interesting animal, but because the, I didn't include a picture of this, which I could have done, but uh, the River Revitalization Foundation, along with the Urban Ecology Center and Milwaukee Riverkeeper, which you're seeing here, um, they created the East, East Bank Park, uh, East Bank Trail and the Beer Line Trail. And as a commemoration of those trails, they hired a, they commissioned a local artist to create a turtle sculpture. Uh, with, you can see those turtle sculptures at both ends of the East Bank Trail, one at Caesars Park and one in Riverside Park. And you can see one along the Beer Line Trail uh, near Wright Street, just south of Gordon Park. Uh, and those turtles have not only their interesting visual form, but they have the names of donors who helped make those trails possible 
uh, on, inscribed in them. Uh, so that's part of the reason it was named Turtle Park. Uh, but it's also a, a tribute to the wildlife, of course, that we are protecting by protecting the land. Thank you for that question. Any others? Yes, I have a question. Um, where the Blue Hole was, that's where the old Humane Society was, correct? I'm not aware of that, maybe. Yeah, I, years ago, I mean, I, I remember they always said they were going to move because they were sinking into the Blue Hole. It was a little bit west, southwest of it. But there's also now in that same area, this incredible solar panel installation. Yes. And who is that? Is yeah. who, who did thank, that? Thank you for that question. So, you know, obviously there's more story to all of these things, but the, I mentioned that there were two, two big quarries that were uh, developed. In fact, it's more complicated than that, but I won't go into the whole thing. Um, the, the, both sides of the river were quarried and not only that, the river itself was quarried. They, they, this company actually changed the course of the river so that they could dig up the limestone and on the riverbed. Uh, but one of the quarries was the Blue Hole and the other quarry was uh, known as Cement Lake, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, and that lake has been filled in. That lake is where your, those solar panels and a huge parking lot is. Uh, the parking lot, I think where the Humane Society used to be is just south of that parking lot, as right. I recall oh, now. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the parking lot's owned by MATC and used by, uh, w, uh, by UWM uh, as well. Uh, and the uh, solar array, I don't know who owns the solar array, but that, that's part of that development. Um, and that was built on top of a landfill uh, there was an attempt at one point to protect it as, as parkland, but that didn't go through. Uh, and it was the, uh, capped, you know, by putting a, putting a parking lot on top of it. But it used to be an old landfill. But that's one of the other quarries that was down in that area. Does that, does that answer your question? Yes. And I have one more question. Just behind Genslin School um, on the bank, there's always been an encampment there. Yeah. Um, the, occasionally it gets uh, raided, but it, it, you know, there's a thriving little community there of, yeah. um, and I was wondering uh, what the policy, I know you're not supposed to have any motorized vehicles on, on um, the Greenway, but I wonder, do you have any, any type of policing or something about these encampments? I Okay, um, it, that's, that's certainly an important issue, and I have often, because I've spent a lot of time there, I have often run into uh, people who have built uh, tent, tent sites or right. more crude construction. Sometimes they're just building a stick construction. Yeah, they're uh, wonderful forts. <laughs> some, yes, well, yeah. shelters. <laughs> um, those are illegal. And when they, the county learns about it, they go in and they Officially, they go in not only with rangers to take take down the structures, but they go in with social service agencies to help the homeless people who build the structures find alternative places to live. So, yes, I was impressed because I saw a van at one point of some kind of outreach, yes. and they were working with the people there. And you're right about that section right behind Ganslin School, uh, which for the other people is just north of... Uh, Locust Street on the west side. Um, that's a very popular spot because it's hard to see. And, you know, people walk along the edge of the river, but, but there's a, it's wide enough there and there's a bluff there that it, it's hard to see what they've, they're doing up there. So, and, and I've seen different, different iterations of tents and structures and that sort of thing down there at different times. And they periodically get taken down, as I say. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, in Esterbrook, we have the falls. And supposedly there was an area, I think it was to the north, that people would use to cross the river that is no longer there, I think. Have you heard anything about that? I'm not aware of that. You mean? Okay. And also, MMSD keeps calling the falls unnatural. 
man-made. <laughs> and I don't know if that's really true or, you know, how they're so, coming up with that. <laughs> yeah, you mean the falls? Because they want to build a fish ladder. Yeah, well, the falls are an impediment to fish. So uh, right. a fish ladder would help some fish, which are not very right. strong I'll, swimmers, to migrate up the falls. Right. But you're All right. you have to do is see one jump, try to jump and not be able to. Well, so, some, some fish are stronger than others. The salmon, mm -hmm. for example, are, can easily get up that. Uh, they can also get up the, the Clutch Park Dam, which is much taller. But mm -hmm. uh, the, So this is the sturgeon the, thing, probably. Yeah, well, and the perch also. Perch are, yeah. very, are, are not strong swimmers. So mm -hmm. the fish, fish ladder would help fish like perch uh, get up the, the that little, it's, it's actually a very small falls. And I called it the, the only natural falls in the Greenway, but its origins most likely, I don't know if this uh, is actually documented, but it's most likely the result of the mining or the quarrying operations uh, because that's limestone, that's the riverbed. And uh, it's well documented that the riverbed was, was moved and was used as a quarry. So it's likely that that is the, the edge of the quarry and that's why that falls is there today. Thank you. I know I had just read somewhere and I met somebody in my neighborhood whose family had farmed here in Whitefish Bay and somehow his family crossed the river and I was wondering and I'd, I'd heard about this sort of land bridge or you know bridge in the river that and then I saw somewhere where it had been taken out that it well, had been there. Yeah it must have been. And that's why out. I asked. Yeah I, I'm not aware of it. Okay. Thanks, Lou. I appreciate sure. it. Mm -hmm. I have right, a question. So, in yes. Estabrook Park, there's a sculpture on the um, south end of yes. the park, pretty close to Capitol. Yes. On the east side of the river. Is, yeah. is that from the same artist that does it on the west side? Uh, if I if I'm thinking of the same thing that you are. It, it has a lot of a, benches, you could write, leave notes. Right, it's a, oh. it's a three part structure. It yeah. was built mostly of wood. Uh, that was a project and I, I'm a little surprised it's still there, but it was a project created by UWM students, architecture students a couple of years ago, I believe. Um, and it, I don't think it's meant to be uh, permanent uh, but it has been there for a while, as you say, mm -hmm. uh, but that's what it is. It's, it was a project that was created, uh, part of a project that UWM architecture students did all over, you know, different students did all over the county, Milwaukee County, or the city of Milwaukee, I think. Uh, but this was the only one in the Greenway. At one point, that structure had a, some kind of a code on it you could scan with your phone that would take you to the website. Yes. yes, when when it was new. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. So you're re you've redeemed yourself. So so if you continue to have questions, please interrupt or, or <laughs> put them in the chat, and uh, Maggie uh, will inter or Tim will interrupt me. Eddie, um, I think I think I, I my guess is what happened here is you you had me in such a, a reflective and awe state. So it's like when anytime you're hearing a good story. If, if the storyteller stops, it takes you, or it takes your brain a minute to, to catch up. So. No problem. I'm not, I'm not trying to criticize you. I'm sorry if it sounded that way. <laughs> not at all. Um, so we've been looking at a, a person I hope you know. She is Cheryl Nen, as you can see. And she is not only a member of Milwaukee Riverkeeper, she is actually the Milwaukee Riverkeeper. That's her title. Uh, for the organization. And you see her on, uh, monitoring the water, which she does, and holding a freshwater mussel. But she wrote the chapter, a, a section of the book about the wildlife that exists in the Greenway. And this picture was not one of my pictures. It's taken by Danielle Cornitz, another photographer who contributed to the book um, of a great horned owl. So uh, real quickly, I'm going to run through the pictures of some wildlife that have been found here. A hummingbird by 
also by Cornets. Some turtles. Beaver. Uh, some of you may know Matt Flower. He works, he's one of the educators at the Urban Ecology Center, and he took this picture of a beaver near Riverside Park. And Matt also took spiders and snakes, everybody's favorite creatures. Gotta love them. Oh, that's all. Okay, so there are others. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I just that was a real quick introduction to some of the wildlife. So I want again, I'm going to go through this next section fairly quickly. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. I want to just say one thing. If you want more pictures, there's a man in Esterbrook Park who has a blog called Signs of Life. Okay. And he will send you an email almost every day of what he's seen in the park. Cool. For what it's worth. <laughs> Do you happen to know his name? Andrew Dressler. Yeah, he's, I follow him on Instagram. So I see the <laughs> pictures every day. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yes. All right. So uh, the best way, it says you can see here, the best way to see and experience the Greenway is in a boat. And if you haven't done this, I highly recommend it. I've done it a number of times. Uh, it never gets tiring. It's one of the best ways to have a good kayaking trip anywhere around this vicinity. And you're still in the heart of Milwaukee. So we're gonna start from Lincoln Park. There's a nice boat launch in the park, as you can see. And many people just paddle around the park. I mean, you don't, it, the trouble with running down the river is you have to have a way to get back. And so you need to have cars that you can, or something, vehicles that you can shuttle boats back and forth with. And I know the Urban Ecology Center does this, which is a great service. Uh, but if you don't wanna do that, you can put in at Lincoln Park and simply paddle around the park, which is also a wonderful experience. And then you don't have to worry about shuttling cars around. But we're gonna go down the river, starting at Lincoln and going across <laughs> down Estabrook Park going across the falls. Now, most people choose to portage across the falls. There is a spot on the west side of the river where you can pull over and get out of your boat and portage around the falls. But as you can see here, not everyone does that. I happened to catch these people. I didn't know they were coming. I was walking along the boardwalk one day in Estabrook Park and I saw these four rafts upstream coming down and I thought, oh, here's a good opportunity. So I, I watched as they came and I took a whole series of pictures. Uh, this is the key moment when they're going over the falls. But as you might, if you've had any experience boating, you might realize what's going to happen in a moment with this boat. They are not going over straight. They're going over sideways. <laughs> and she's just realizing this is not a good idea. And they did flip over and they splashed around, got their kayak. It's not very deep there. They, they, they got their, kayak, their, their raft back up. Uh, they, they had to pull it, haul it over to the side of the river uh, and get all the water out of it. And then did they continue on down the river? No, they portaged the raft back up to the top and did it again. I just love that story. I've got a whole series. If, if you go to the website and go to the blog and search for Estabrook Falls or rafting on Estabrook Falls, you'll find the whole story and you can see the whole sequence of pictures of them coming down, spilling over, getting in the water and all of that. And fishing, of course. As you're boating down the river, you will probably see many fishermen all along the way, depending on the weather, but they tend to be out in all kinds of weather. So I mentioned protecting the view shed. This is the why this is the best way to experience the Greenway, because here you are. You could be 
hundreds of miles north. <laughs> you could be up in Vilas County on the Wolf River or somewhere, but you're in Milwaukee. And where's the city? This is between Riverside and Gordon looking down from the Locust Street Bridge. Every now and then you will see a building because some buildings were built before the greenway protections were put in place. And that's the example that you see here. But there are whole sections you can paddle for an hour if you don't go too fast and you can just feel like you're somewhere up north. It's just an amazing experience. If you've been around the Urban Ecology Center long enough, you might recognize the man in the foreground. He is Dan Gray. He used to work for the UEC. He's now a teacher, works for a high school, I believe. Uh, here's another fisherman that you'll run into fishermen. This guy caught this salmon and I was, I was standing in the river alongside of him and I was taking pictures and I missed the moment when he kissed the fish. He actually kissed it, but I missed that. I mean, this is the closest I got. Teddy, we have a quick question. Yeah. Um, is there a part of the river that is deep enough for a wooden kayak? That may be a little fragile. That's a wonderful question. So this, he, he happens to be at Hubbard Park, between Hubbard and Kern Park. Uh, and it's actually the shallowest part of the river. Um, there are many times of the year when the river is too shallow to float a boat across it without scraping. Even a, a you know, a kayak, a, even even one that's made of plexiglass. I wouldn't take a fragile boat across it when the water isn't higher. So if you go when there's been a lot of rain and the river is high, you don't have to worry. But, uh, but there are a couple of sections where the river is pretty shallow. And this is one of them. Does that answer your question? Yes. Thank you. Uh, so the next one is a deeper spot, but a narrow spot. This guy is actually, he looks like he's really speeding down the river, but he's not. He is facing upriver and he is surfing on the waves. This is just south of the North Avenue Bridge. Between the North Avenue Bridge and the dam, there is a narrow spot, a flume where the the river gets narrow and runs very quickly. And there are, if the water is high, there are really you know, significant waves that just, they're called standing waves because they just stayed in place. And these little kayaks, these guys like to go out in these little kayaks and surf on top of these waves. So that's what he's doing. At the end of the Greenway, the southern end is Turtle Park, and here is the boat landing there, uh, which is, if you're going to do this run, that's a good place to take out and shuttle back up to Lincoln Park. But you can continue from here down, obviously, down to the harbor if you want to keep on paddling. How are we doing for time, Tim? Yeah, sorry. We're um, we're 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 it's we're past ten, but some folks have already signed off and said thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, so you know, I think as long as folks are still here, you can uh, if you have a little time to finish up, um, okay, uh, folks can leave if they need to. I'm almost done. Um, I, you know, there there's more in the book than any of this, but I I like to end this with a couple of the stories that I really like the best. Uh, this is a <laughs> this is a surgeon sturgeon, and I don't know how much you know about sturgeons, uh, but they're an ancient fish, and they were completely shut out of the river when the dam was built in 1843. 
it's a native fish and it was, it's natural for the sturgeon to fit, swim up the Milwaukee River. Uh, before the dam was built, they did this, but they haven't been able to do it since 1843 when the North Avenue Dam was built. However, River Edge Nature Center, which is located in Newburgh, way up north on the Milwaukee River, they've been, for the past 15 years, they've been you know, hatching baby salmon, they're fingerling little salmons, and releasing them, thank, you know, I have public events where people help release them into the river in hopes, for 15 years, they've had hopes that the sturgeon will imprint on the river and return to spawn. And it, I'm happy to say, 2021 was the year when it happened. This is a, this is a guy who works for the DNR. Uh, somebody reported a sighting of a sturgeon and the DNR went out the next day uh, with a team and they actually caught not just this fish, which is, as you can see, a very large sturgeon. They caught three of them. And one of the three, they were all very large fish, one of the three was tagged and they knew that it had come from River Edge Nature Center. So the cycle had been completed. These fish were attempting to swim up the river and, and were just before the, North, the, the Esterbrook Falls. Uh, that's where they found them. Um, we talked about whether they can get up the falls or not. They weren't able to get up the falls. Uh, but this is an, an historic moment. And coincidentally, I've been working on this book for two years uh, as artist in residence for the River Revitalization Foundation. And just so happens that this happened in April, just before we were planning to send this book to press. And this story was written by Paul Smith, who is a reporter for the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. And he wrote the story for the Journal Sentinel. And he graciously allowed us to reprint it in the book. One of my favorite stories because of the historic nature of it. My other and even more favorite story was precipitated by this man. His name is Mark Denning. He's a Menominee uh, and Ojibwa, no, uh, Oneida. He's a Menominee and Oneida uh, Indian. Uh, and he's a teacher at UWM. And he, when he learned that we wanted input from Native American community on this book, he, he asked me if he, I would take him on a tour, a boating tour of the river. And so we did that on a really cold day in March. But that was just a scouting trip. What he did was he invited members of the Indian community from the reservation up north, the Menominee Reservation up north, and this is just two of them, uh, who came down in April when the weather was a little warmer. And they did a, again, this is historic because Mark believes that there, I mean, he, he, there doesn't seem to be any record. So he believes this is the first documented river trip, boating trip on the Milwaukee River by native people since 1843. And we, it was done for the book. And he and I together wrote a story about this event, which is the culminating, concluding story in, in the book. So that's the conclusion. And I put a link to the Book Baby online store in the chat if you're interested in buying the book. I'd be happy to answer any other questions you have. Um, I also want to mention that I am not only, I have been the art, art resident artist, <laughs> artist in residence for River Revitalization Foundation through a program called Art Servancy. I'm also on the board of Preserve Our Parks and our website is a wealthofnature.org. And I would love to have you follow our website if you go to the website and you subscribe, you will receive my newsletter and you will get to enjoy the blog posts, which I post 
every week, once a week, sometimes more than once a week. But I won't pester you with emails more than once a week. I promise. So without further ado, if you have any questions, now is the time. 